what are the things that are important or relevant? And how they are connected to each other based on those um, opposite uh, forces, I can call them. Uh, if there are, are positive reinforcement or a negative reinforcement um, or opposing effect to uh, to this uh, situation. So the situation again was we were looking at a hotel stay and we wanted to see using three adverse comments um, we will construct an ideal world's causal model for the hotel and we're connecting the factors in your um, in the causal model as indicated by the dotted lines so we have some dotted lines in the in the paper that you receive um, assume that the business re revenue reinforces cost efficiency which is the extent to which the hotel resources are converted into improved service quality and customer satisfaction at a minimal cost so the idea again we wanted to see how those three things that you selected were connected to all these variables. So I gave you two to start with, which laundry and food. Uh, in my case, in my solution, I chose efficiency, maintenance, and service. And now I wanted to see how each one of them were connected to uh, service quality. So I think you have some lines. In my case, I don't have those, so I'm going to write them here. So if I go back, this is what I, what I was referring to. So, so I'm going to use this notation. Let me just write a notation here. Positive and negative. And the positive, obviously, is the positive reinforcement. So let me write the description. So this is reinforcement and this is country for opposing effect. So in your opinion, if we have in our case this dirty laundry, how is that affecting our service quality? Is it a positive, or is it reinforcement, or is it an opposing effect? Yes. Yes, exactly. Um, if we think about efficiency, um, we can see this from multiple point of view, but efficiency basically denotes something that is positive, right? Um, so that's going to be uh, reinforcement into our service quality. Um, I think the way that we describe um, cooked food, or it was that it was badly cooked food, and I'm referring back to, to this. So in that case, that could be seen as a negative or opposing effect. Maintenance. Um, well, it depends on how you see it. Let's let's keep the the mentality of this is not going well. This maintenance is poorly done, so we can see that as negative as well. <clears throat> and poor ser service, we can only see that as also being uh, a contrary or opposing effect to towards service quality. Now. We want to connect all the, the rest of the variables in this diagram. Um, so service quality, if it is good service quality, 
that should have a positive or reinforcement effect in the customer satisfaction. Um, when we have good customer satisfaction, I actually have the diagram here, but um, also that results in a positive or reinforcement effect in terms of uh, business revenue. If you increase your business revenue, most likely you're going to end up having more um, efficiency, I guess, um, in terms of uh, making more profit from your from your business. Um, and if you have more business revenue, then that can also have a positive effect in your staff. Hopefully, you are using that money to provide better salaries or you have more money to hire more people. Um, if you think about hiring more people, that should have a um, contrary or opposing effect in terms of your cost. You're going to be increasing your cost. Um, and it, at the same way, increasing your cost will have a effect on cost efficiency. Um, but increasing the staff should also have a positive effect in your service, also in your maintenance. Um, business revenue can also be associated with better equipment, maybe more equipment, if you're using your, your revenue appropriately, um, which can also translate into having better maintenance um, equipment. I don't know if it is associated to food somehow, maybe. You can have a better kitchen, um, maybe better equipment to do the laundry. So, Every single arrow in this diagram, we can debate on, okay? You can see it from one point, I can see it from different points, so what I'm trying to say is there's no right or wrong way of developing this diagram. The idea here is that as a team, we can have a discussion in terms of how do you think each one of these areas are affected. So if you're working, most likely when you're in a systems engineer environment, you're going to be working with a lot of people. So this is a good tool for you to have that conversation. The idea is once you have this, or once you have agreed on how this diagram looks like, uh, now you can start looking for interventions on how, what are the things that you can do to improve your system. Uh, so for instance, we, we, we saw that based on our, or my discussion, if you want to improve on service, maybe this is the right way to go. So we have to look at, are we hiring enough people? Are we hiring the right people? Are these people trained correctly? Are they getting paid in the right way? Do we have a high turnover? Having a high turnover is bad for any business. You want to keep your employees for a long period. Um, so the idea again is that you can use this tool to have that conversation and you start identifying what are the areas of improvement so you can develop a strategy or a system to address those. Questions? So I already graded your your end square uh, your causal loop models. You can keep that file for your for your benefit. Uh, your grade should be posted already on tracks. So the next tool that I want to discuss today is called an N-squared chart. And again, this is a popular tool because it provides a visual representation of the interactions among the entities of a system. So the N-squared chart is a popular tool among systems engineers. It is a table with n rows and n columns. So you have a square matrix and square matrix cells. 
Um, it records entities and the relationships or interchanges between them. Entities are entered on the leading diagonal, while the relationships appears in the other cells. So the idea is simple. You have this matrix or this table, which have the same number of columns as the same number of rows. And the idea is that you're going to start listing these entities in this lead diagonal, and then you're going to start seeing how are they connected. So I want to see this relationship, this relationship, this relationship, maybe from this part to this part, from this part to this part. And I can also see this relationship, which essentially goes in the opposite direction. So how those, and what are the interchanges between these entities? So here's an example. We have outflows and inflows. So, um, so essentially we can list the, the relationship between a professor and TA and also between the TA and the professor. Um, so let me see. From, from a professor to the TA, again, passing papers and homework for grading. So that's the, the relationship between the professor and the TA. That's the interaction. So it goes this way. And then the TA and the professor returns graded material. But I can also see what is the relationship between the professor and the student. Okay, so I can use this cell to describe that interaction. So, um, let's just say lectures. Again, okay, could be many other things, but just one example. So the professor lectures the student. Um, student, we can say submit homework, uh, contact during office hours. We can also see what is the relationship between the TA and the student and the student and the TA. Um, in this university, there's not a direct connection between TAs and students. In other universities, uh, TAs will hold office hours and you can go and talk to the TAs. Um, so let's say that's the case. Um, TA can contact student asking questions about homework solution. The student can provide feedback Provide feedback. Provide feedback. Um, yes. Uh, so, yeah, what I'm trying to say is like this guy is trying to grade your homework and he doesn't understand what you wrote, so he's contacting you uh, yeah, to check on that answer, and then you provide feedback. But you can see it the other way around. That's right. <clears throat> and then, um, 
I also have here assignment. So how is the assignment connected to uh, the professor, the TA, and the student? Well, at this point, you can see what is the, the purpose of the, of the diagram. Okay, so let's say your system, you have four subsystems. One of them is looking at the decision-making process. Another one is looking at the entities that are participating. Another one is looking at, I don't know, the power source. And then you can list all those subsystems in this way. You can start seeing what is the connection between them. Okay? And that way you can start identifying also what are the inputs, outputs from one system to the other. Uh, what is the feedback that needs to happen between them. And at the same time, you can start identifying if there's any interfaces that are required for that interaction to happen. And that's, again, a very simple tool, but it's powerful in the sense of seeing or illustrating the connection between all the participate, participants of, of the system. Questions? Let's finish this. Um, so let's say the professor <clears throat> and the assignment, you can say that the professor prepares the homework assignment. TA maybe, maybe basically has no no saying. Maybe you can say that prepares a solution sometimes. For homework. And the student well um solve homework. Um, in terms of the feedback from the assignment to there's nothing here. Let me go back. Assignment TA I guess there's no feedback at all. So there's not necessarily have you don't necessarily have to write something. In, in each one of the boxes. If there's no connection, there's no connection. And I think in your homework assignment that is also due next week on Wednesday, you have to prepare one puzzle of model and in a square chart. So that, that homework is already posted. Um, so you can start working on that after today's lecture. Um, <clears throat> so again, n square charts are a very compact and allow for overview of even complex systems. Interfaces tend to occur in pairs, potentially forming simple reactive, uh, reactive causal loops. So you see, they are somehow connected. So if you, if you develop your causal loop model, that relationship also can be represented within an n square chart. However, this n square chart may represent multi-element loops. So it's not just one element or two elements participating. You can also see the connection among all of them. Like the causal loop model, it is possible to simulate the dynamic behavior of an n square chart. <clears throat> Interactive systems can be represented very simply in this uh, chart, and this is, uh, again, this figure has six interfaces uh, cells. So we have these three and these three. So system one and three could interact. These two can interact, but also one and two and two and three. Um, can represent three reactual or reactive causal loops which are represented on the left side of this figure for system 1 and 2, system 2 and 3, and systems 1 and 3.
Well, the n square chart represents a system's internal subsystems. It is important to remember that the whole system exists in an environment with other systems. So, to represent subsystems, you can surround the n square chart with another layer to show the whole system. So, the idea is, let's say that your system is contained. Excuse me. So let's say your system is contained in this area. So after you have completed your n square chart, if you want to see how your system interacts with the environment or with other systems, you can add another layer, which is representing those, and then see how the overall system or the actual subsystems of the system interact with the environment. Um, the figure Charlie systems X, Y interact with the system of interest. So how X and how Y are interacting with the, the rest of the system. Uh, so for example, we can say that A is the chase chassis, B is the transmission, C is the sub suspension, and then the ABC is a car. So this is the system denoted here. Then we can say that X is the driver and how the driver interacts with the, with the car, which is here, and why is the vehicle test system, so how that interacts with the car and the systems or the subsystems inside the car. Um, the n square chart can be valuable, too, for amazing info about complex systems or projects. Um, so rows and columns can be interchanged so as to create patterns of interfaces. Um, so that's what we're trying to, to illustrate here. So we have multiple systems here, and we can start looking at, okay, maybe this area is connected, so we can create a boundary here and call this a, a subsystem or a system by itself. Um, figure reveals some of the archetypical or archetypal patterns uh, for the system, functionality bound blocks, or interfaces, so as I was saying, you have a bound here, maybe you can create a subsystem out of these entities, or a system by itself, and mutual interfaces, physical, uh, collocation, communication. <clears throat> So that takes us to the definition of encapsulation. So the functionality bound block of systems D, E, and F, and G, each four, could be capped or encapsulated and treated as one system. Okay, so we can call this system Q, for instance. The n square chart will be significantly simplified by doing that. So now you, instead of looking at this as independent components, you can see that as a whole. Uh, this reduces perceived complexity and entropy. Elaboration, expanding system Q back to its current status. So basically, instead of looking at this as one system by itself, you can go and expand it. That's elaboration. Environment, interfaces, inner flows, all of that is maintained in that uh, definition. Um, here's another example. This is for an air traffic management system. <clears throat> At an airport, it is not complete. It's just showing you some of the interactions. Uh, we have ground movement control is expressed as GMC. And the airspace management is expressed as SM, ASM. So again, within all the systems or entities that are part of the overall system, and then we start looking at how are they connected. Okay, so the inputs, what are the outputs in this area? The inputs are this, the outputs are this. Um, so the controlling airspace has some input 
take over from the airspace management and that's what's happening here between these two controlling approach or takeoff and when that's done then there's an output hand over to the approach so that goes back to the controlling airspace um, there's some cooperation between uh, instruction between these two aircraft taxi and the ground marshalling the you know, instruction and there's cooperation between the two and, and so on. So again, the idea is that you can start looking at how these entities within your system are interacting. Besides being holistic and synthetic, using n squared chart reveals that organismic and dynamic nature of system of the system in question. Um, Programs may be devised to rearrange the rows and columns of an n squared chart to reveal the patterns. Um, this is similar to those that you saw in your facilities planning class, the computerized layout procedures that align departments according to the interaction between them. So we can also um, apply some of those techniques to start seeing the connection between uh, some of these entities in our system. Um, so, I think that's what we are trying to illustrate here. Um, here's the initial, the initial uh, description of the system. Then, as we start aligning them, we can see how everything kind of follows a structure according to their interaction. Okay, so that's the end of this uh, lecture. Let me.